the reason I'm out on this junket today is that my next stop is to load up all the contents of a house for a gal I'm going to sell on consignment for up in Marion, and we're on the way there. I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. You can see it's starting to be spring here. It's a very beautiful place in spring. Lots of different kinds of plants and trees coming up. By summer, it will be a big jungle and you won't be able to see these houses through these trees. Well, this is a place I keep missing and I've missed it again today, but it's the Clement Mineral Museum. And apparently it is considered to be a really good, in fact, some would say world-class mineral museum. It occupies this building here and it's got some interesting old steam equipment from farms outside of it. I will have to come back and check it out. Minerals are kind of interesting. I mean, they are very, very old. You wish you could get out and explore it too, don't you? Well, I found one antique shop in town. I haven't been to this one, so we're gonna give it a shot. I don't know what to expect, but it's a little red brick house that says Brick House Antique, so that sounds good to me. Let's go. I understand sometimes people are worried about security and stuff, but I like to show people what I'm seeing and where I'm going, and you've got some neat stuff. Huh. Gosh, I don't know who made that one. That's kind of neat, though, and I like the old uh, oak washstand there, too. Well, there's a couple more rooms down the hall. I will definitely take a look there, but I already found something that I like right here, this little rum rail vase. I just think that's a neat color, and I always liked yeah, rum rail. You know, I don't see much of that around this part of the country. You know, I don't see it really much anywhere, because if you were going to find it anywhere, I would think it'd be around here. I'm from out west originally, and we would see a few pieces. Like I said, I've been close for about three months, and... Just get this the first week I've been out here in the mountains, I get off. Well, you know, you uh, you picked the right time to do it if you had to be close, because uh, winter isn't much anyway. Yeah, that's true. I've never seen this little tray before. Looks like it folds up and it's got two tiers. Huh. And we're going to put some glassware with cats and dogs because I'm going to buy this neat little thing the fellow was telling me is from a uh, commuter train, tourist train south of Nashville. And this was something that they would put on as a little bar cart and it opens up. It's got two trays and then it folds up into a nice flat little thing. So I think that's kind of cool. Never seen this one before exactly. It's just so unusual, but it's time for it to go. I'm... Yeah, it's neat. Well, I thank you. I think it's really cool. I always like putting my push pin in for where I came from. And it all sort of depends on the day. I don't think anybody was from there. I think they were from somewhere else, but I will put I'll hold the map together since I'm really from all over. Here's a nice piece of Roseville silhouette. It's sure priced right, but it looks like it was a factory second. This is about the time Roseville started having some quality problems in the late 40s. And you notice the glaze is a little bit of a smudge there. If I thought that was just dirt and it would come off, I'd get that, but I don't think it will.
What's this box in the middle here for? Let's see. Raggedy Ann and Andy. Small talk Betty by case for sister small talk and baby small talk and baby small walk. I don't know these dolls. These are Mattel. This is from the same era as Little Kittles. Let's see if we can open this. And there she is. That might be a memory for somebody. Nice kitchen queen there. Next to Mr. Simpson. There's the base of a kitchen queen. Be nice if it had its top, but that actually could be useful just as it is as a utility side table and counter in a house because it's got the nice painted detail all around. In fact, the fact that the detail goes to the back makes me think maybe this was just built as a side cabinet because it doesn't make sense you would decorate the top that way if part of it was going to be covered. So perhaps that was just built as a base without having a top. And you cannot go to a good antique store in Kentucky without seeing some good cast iron because it's so popular here. Pie safe is full of it too. Here's an older Hager piece. This is going to be 1930s or 40s, I would guess. Well, maybe later because it's got the felt pads. So that could be even as late as the 60s or 70s, I suppose. I know they still were making that color. Hager did make a lot of things over a long period of time. I like the brass lamp here. Rayo, that's a common name in lamps from that era. Well, it's not a very big shop, but I found a couple of things and some neat stuff I haven't seen before. So that's why these little shops are worth stopping at too. Well, I've got a little bit of time before my appointment and here we are at the 88 Dip, which looks like it's been here for forever, but they are making strawberry salads, which sounds pretty healthy and good. And I think I'm gonna try one. Well, for something you can eat in your lap, although I think I'm gonna get out and use their table, this looks pretty good for a roadside restaurant. The ferry this sign refers to is the Caven Rock Ferry to Illinois. Now, if you're in this section of Kentucky near Marion, you're going to see the name Yoder and a lot of other Amish names because the Amish are spreading out of Pennsylvania into other parts of the country. And this is one of their preferred areas. Western Kentucky has good land for farming and a lot of country related things that help them like saddlery and stuff that is relevant to the way that they live their lives. And they also are finding a ready group of tourists and people who are excited to see them here. And so it's really cool. Notice there's no power going to that house. And here we are down this little country lane out in the middle of the sticks is the house which the gal I'm helping has lived in since 1976 and she was a collector of old things so a lot of the stuff that's in here is true antique or close to it and my job is to figure out what to take for her and how and where to sell it so I've got a big job to do today well I'm thinking of it if you wouldn't mind to hit that subscribe button if you're interested in membership information please hit join and that'll tell you how that works and what memberships entail as well but the subscribing is free and it doesn't cost you anything it helps us with YouTube so we really appreciate that click the bell to be reminded about future videos and hit that thumbs up to like this one and now let's go back to this video Okay, so Pat is upstairs, that's my client, and she is working on stuff she needs to do there. And I am starting with the little downstairs parlor, and we're just going to show some pictures of things that I'm either planning on taking or hoping to take, depending on room where I have to sell things. So, I will start a little visual inventory here. 
This is 1960s, but it is a dry sink, and that's a form around here that sells fairly well, and she's been using it as a TV cabinet. I can take the TV for her to an estate sale, I believe, so I think that uh, I can get that. I believe these little occasional pieces and this nice 19 teens or 20 little desk here are also to be taken, and you know, desks, well, those are doing well right now. I'm not sure how much of the stuff on the mantle I'm to take. I certainly hope I get to take some because there is a very nice old wood plane there. A really cool bird-shaped wood plane. This would have been done as a novelty, but boy, there's, there's a market for that. That is unusual. A nice lumber scribe, little oilers. Look at the carved owl. Yes, this is gonna be fun. She has some neat stuff that I think people are gonna really enjoy. I don't know whether I get to take Mickey Mouse guitar yet, but this is a good one. It's not in great shape, but the graphics are good, and that's what most people care about now. Old turn in the corner there, so I'll have to ask her about this place again. And then, because of the era of the house, well, there's a piece of Italian glass. I have to make a list of everything that we're taking, of course, and have her sign off on it before it goes. I always like to make sure my folks have a record of everything I'm doing. And then, this won't be for today, but if I can find room, this is a very handsome, I'll have to show you because I can't get back from it, it's in a narrow hallway. This is a very handsome gun cabinet and it's fitted inside. It's locked right now, but we'll see the inside at some point, I'm sure. The grandfather clock was made by her husband in the 1960s or 70s. She's keeping a lot of the big upholstered pieces, which are beautifully done, but a lot of the smalls and the small furniture will be going out to sell. The six-legged table. And she told me that these were shown on the set of a famous movie that I can't remember the name of now with Barbara Stanwyck. This pretty gal looks like Austrian from about 1900. And there is a complete small size spinning wheel. I haven't had one of those in years. The lighthouse lamp is something interesting that is a really cool, probably handmade piece, 1930s. This is an old vase from about 1900 turned into a lamp. Corner shelf. Some various linens. A very pretty dresser box. Inside we have Various costume jewelry we'll have to look through. And then this one also. Various costume jewelry. So Pat is keeping most of these items, but there are three more boxes of costume jewelry that I'm to take. That's a neat little piece there that she's keeping. I don't blame her. And I am to take the smoking stand. They're smoking stands when they have a tin lining, like a humidor sometimes a copper lining. And it seems to me that she mentioned one other thing. What was it? Oh yes, the rocking chair. I'll probably have to come back for that because that's going to take some space. Faux pearls. This one with the ballet dancers has... Ooh, look at those. Those are great. And this one has just a few general things. So we will take all of them. That's very cute inside the lid there. So now we're in the dining room. I will be gathering some of the furniture, depending on space, when I find out what I have room for. I know I'll be taking this drop leaf table and the other dry sink here, which is probably an Ethan Allen. This is a very pretty Victorian bride's basket in peach blow. Hopefully we'll find the basket, the holder for it. There's a Fenton 
pattern of glass that it's not the Spanish lace. I believe it's called Feather. Some nice porcelains from the early part of the 20th century, including this set here. That one is not marked. Let's see if the middle one is. I believe this is continental European, probably German or Austria. It does not have a mark. 1960s set here, the decanter with the ruby flash. And then over here, I like the wallpaper. It's like twall, but in harvest gold. There's some more linens here and a really neat looking quilt top that she pointed out to me that I think is going to prove to have a really nice strong pattern. You're going to see the back of it here, but when we open this up, this is going to look great. So that will be that. Here's some pewter. A nice blanket made in the 1920s or 30s. Some more doilies and crocheted linens. Here we have a spoon rack and a spoon collection. They look like they're mainly more recent, but there might be an old one or two. And then here's this. This is a very nice set of sterling. Most of it is one pattern that was a wedding set, and this is Damask Rose by Heirloom Sterling. It's a very pretty pattern. It's got the florals of the Victorian to Gibson curl era, but done in more of an art deco, almost modernist shape with the off-centered design. It's a pretty collectible pattern. All right, so inside the hutch are a set of etched stems, very pretty from 1940s or 50s. The bell is by Pilgrim Glass. This is cranberry glass. Plate is Westmoreland, I believe, looking closer. And then below the pewter, we get into drawers here. Just one candle snuffer. A set of stainless flatware with a modernist design. Japanese made. A lot of this was made in Japan around 1970 with these modern designs. Okay, and then in here is a bunch of Bakelite. A bunch of Bakelite utensils. I think she said she had a breakfast set, along with some swanky swigs that we'll see here in a minute. Carving knives. This should be a hone, perhaps? Oh, actually a... It's a little set of sterling, or silver plate, not sure which, we'll take a look. What are you in here? Very well wrapped. Are these crystals? I'll bet they're crystals for the chandelier. Ah yes, little daggers. A couple of little bisques. These look like they may be later editions. And then in the cabinet we have a lot of porcelain cups and saucers. Crest glass, we'll pick out the pieces that we think are saleable today. Some additional china. A phoenix bird. Now this is 1930s when you see the phoenix bird. Actually the pre-war has a muddier background in the 1950s is this very clear. And we've got this little set as well, also Japanese. And an early opalescent, you can see the opal fire in it. So that tells us this is an early piece. And it looks like an original Shirley Temple creamer that they gave out at the theaters in the 1930s. And some bone dishes hiding in the back, so we'll go through here next. There is the stand for the bride's basket, and that's a very nice one. 
it's great that it's figural. That's going to make it a lot more impressive. It should fit right in there. And while I'm not planning on taking the piece of furniture today, I do need to empty it so that I can get it on the next trip. And there's a bunch of interesting stuff in there. I see some steins. Nice old Bristol glass pitcher, it looks like. The Moon and Stars candy dish. Some really fun cactus and southwestern swanky swigs. Here's a piece of Fostoria American. And some things that will surprise us in the back. So we will get started on this one. Here's a better look at what is coming out of this cabinet that we're taking for sale. The old logo glasses. Quite a number of swanky swigs and larger tumblers with these Mexicali designs. And then this pair of very fun 1970 vintage iron candlesticks. A few steins of the 1960s era. This is a 1910s porcelain cream and sugar and there's an amber console set with the barley twist candles and the centerpiece bowl which is likely from the 30s so now that the furniture is mainly stripped i will be taking the dry sink this drop leaf table probably the chairs they're just because they're in such perfect condition and then there will be other small furniture as well throughout. So if you think, wow, he's getting all this really great stuff and he doesn't seem very excited, believe me, I am. There are some cool things here. There's definitely some things worth some money here. I'm doing a removal at someone's house and they've been gracious enough for, to let me film because I explained to her that we're trying to show younger generations why this stuff is cool. And so she agreed to that, but I don't like to make a lot of noise in someone's house. And also, frankly, when I'm taking a whole lot of things, I'm taking things that are worth $5 and $500. So I don't want to make too much of a fuss over any one thing because I want the client to be pleasantly surprised and not create a lot of expectations that I have to live up to later. Because markets change and things that sold today might not sell as well tomorrow. So we have to bear in mind that we are working for someone in their home and treat that accordingly. In the meantime, well, this is it. The road ends here. You can go no further until you wait for that ferry over there. That little town across the, from us is Cave in Rock, Illinois. And Cave in Rock is famous for being the hiding place of a lot of notorious river pirates, highwaymen, gangsters, murderers, brothel owners, particularly Sam Mason who, if you remember the Walt Disney movie Davy Crockett, is one of the people that Davy Crockett fights in that movie. They were pretty bad people. They set up a gambling hall and a brothel and a saloon near the cave, which is up on the riverbank. I don't think we can see the cave from here necessarily. We'll see if we can see it around the corner here. But they would wait for people to come down the river, lure them in with wine women and song and then murder them and take all their money so you better have had a good time because it's your last let's see if we can bring this a little closer so you can see this is the ohio river it's quite placid right now because we're just at the end of winter and we haven't had a lot of rain but oh believe me after good rains this place can really rage in 1937 it was something like 35 feet over its bank and thankfully we in the antique business get to read about this kind of history and enjoy it that way instead of having to have lived it. The old days are wonderful to remember, but maybe weren't so great to live in. So we're glad that we're here now with you, and I am looking forward to seeing you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage world. I'm George the Antique Nomad at Instagram, Facebook, and on YouTube every Monday and Wednesday at 8 o'clock Eastern. So I'll look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video.
Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now!